Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the West Lindsay series. This is one of the nine districts of Lincolnshire and one of the county's most rural. It has 128 civil parishes. Let's see which one this episode's all about. Okay, welcome back to West Lindsay again, people. We're right on the border with North East Lincolnshire here and we're the parish that we've done before. That's Keelby. I believe Keelby Parish Council look after this one. I'm not totally sure. It definitely doesn't have its own parish council because it's really, really small. And as you can see from that sign over there, it's a dead end. There's a church up there and a few other interesting bits, but really there's not a lot to tell you about in the parish of Ryby. The West Lindsay series is sponsored by Gaines Recycles 01427 617 752. For all your cycling needs, this is your one stop shop. Located at 20 Ropery Road or online at gainsrecycles.com. There's a link in the description. Gaines Recycles, ask for Trevor Halstead. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Today we're in Ryby, a village and civil parish located at the very northeastern tip of West Lindsay. We're on the border with North East Lincolnshire here. We're approximately four miles southwest of Grimsby, a town we're getting ever closer to. Make no mistake about it, Ryby was a hard one to cover. There's relatively little out there about the place when you compare it to other nearby places like Keelby, Caister, Swallow, and even Cabourne, which is smaller. However, I did manage to find enough to make an interesting little video. Ryby was the seat of the Tomlin family, who had links to the Bishop of Lincoln. They lived in a huge country house which was located in the village. The house is now gone, but the associated parkland and some of the estate's buildings are still very much here. Ryby is also the birthplace of the fashion model and photographer Jill Kennington, best known for her appearance in Michelangelo Antonioni's 1966 film Blow Up. And it's also known to Grimsby locals as a notorious accident black spot at one point in particular along the A18. We'll be driving to that point in a short while. Wish me luck. Before that though, we'll have a walk around this tiny village and see what else we can see. We start at the entrance to Ryby Grove, a country house owned in the late 1700s and early 1800s by the Tomlin family, a name synonymous with Ryby. In 1803, Marmaduke Tomlin bequeathed the house and estate to George Prettyman, who was the Bishop of Lincoln, on the condition that he adopted the name Tomlin. The house was demolished in 1935, which left the surrounding cottages and the rest of the Ryby estate. This then, sighted on the A1173, is what Ryby looks like today, and it's very small. With a population of just 129 people, it's no surprise there aren't many basic amenities, but there's still a post box, so that's something. The one thing it does have is a huge church, possibly the biggest one in this part of West Lindsay. This dead-end road, known as Church Hill, will take us towards it. 
So you could argue the most interesting things about Ryby are off limits to the public. If you were to go back this way and turn left out here, uh, you would head towards uh, Cabourn and uh, and Caister, obviously. That's where you'll find two medieval uh, barrows, but you can't access them, they're on private land. I will do a special section on those later. Just before we head into the church, there's a parish notice board to stick a card on. 67 down now in West Lindsay, we're motoring through them. The church is a Grade II listed building and it's dedicated to St Edmund. It dates from the 12th century and is built from limestone and ironstone. It was restored in 1868. The east window records that George Tomlin funded the restoration and there are several memorials to the Tomlin family in the church. Its west door is late 13th century and there's a blocked 12th century door in the north aisle. This small sign is what I ended up using for this video's thumbnail, and that's not because I forgot to record a village sign, it's more to do with the fact that Ryby doesn't appear to have one, or at least it hasn't got one that's easy to capture. Anyway, let's go into the church next. So, according to this board, the church is open. Are we going in? Well, I don't know about you, I think it'd be rude not to. Let's go and have a look inside the church here at St Edmunds in Ryby. Ooh, very dark, very dark in here. Do we have a light switch? Yes, we do. Turn the lights on. There we go. You can see what I'm doing now. So first of all, we've got a font on the left. And a couple of tablets behind this. So have a look and see what these do, these say. To the memory of Richard Rodley, only son of Richard Rodley, and Anne, sister of Martha Dixon. Near this place lieth the body of Martha, daughter of Thomas Dixon. Ah, so they're obviously related. Okay. Let's have a walk Ooh, down the aisle. There's a piece of stained glass at the end of this. It's quite a long church, actually. I didn't expect it to be as long as this. Got an organ on the left, quite nice. And let's go up to the altar. I'm looking on the walls for anything else. There's a tablet there and an urn. Can't read what the tablet says because it's far too high up. Even with the lights on, I can't see anything here. <laughs> anyway, here's the stained glass. That looks rather good. Up here, look at this, we've got some coats of arms, three of them. What those are all about. Okay, let's go down here. Another tablet here. This is to do with John Parkinson and uh, a couple of other Parkinsons John Gilliatt Parkinson and Robert Clark Parkinson. another tablet on this wall here. James Tor of Morton Hall. Oh, hang on, look at this. Buried at Swinderby. That's a place we've not been to yet. That's in North Kesteven. Connection between two parts of Lincolnshire there. Come down this side. What else do we got? Nothing much apart from what looks to be a roll of honour. Yep. Quite a few people. This is for uh, obviously World War One, not for World War Two. And it looks like there's a book exchange here too in this church. So there's quite a bit in here, to be honest with you. Wasn't expecting this to be quite so much, but there you go. Sometimes it does surprise you, I guess. And that's padded this video out a little bit. That's three and a half minutes worth of footage inside this church. So, uh, right, let's go and see what else ryby has got. The rest of the walk basically just takes us to the end of Church Hill and back again. All that's really here is a group of cottages and a farm, not really much to write home about. That said, it does give me a chance to put in a few more interesting bits. 
There was a civil war battle here in 1645 called the Battle of Ryby Gap. There was also a Wesleyan Chapel built here in 1884, which we'll see shortly. And Ryby once had a school too, which could accommodate 60 children. It was built in 1890 as Ryby National School, replacing an earlier school built in 1848 by, guess who, the Tomlins. It was known as Ryby County School by 1947 and it closed in 1958. Now we've reached a track which runs around the back of the church and in front of us is a small wood and this is definitely a private wood because there are no rights of way through it. So around the side of the church there's this, this track. Now I don't know where this goes but I do know it leads to something which I saw on an overhead image before I came here and I'm not totally sure what it is. And uh, the landmark in question seems to be behind this wall here. And I've just passed a fence with a sign on it that says the walled garden. Let's see what this is all about. So this was a bit of a mystery tour. The overhead images I was referring to show quite clearly a huge walled area. I now know, of course, what I could see was a walled garden. I could find next to nothing about this area, so this is mostly educated guesswork. It seems to be, or at least have been, a part of Ryby Grove. That would make sense, most country houses had a walled garden. I didn't get too close to the gap in the wall because there were builders around. I would assume then this is going to be turned into something else eventually. I hope this old wall though is kept, whatever it's going to be. From the track you get a great view over Ryby Park. This is the parkland which would have belonged to the house. In the middle of this landscape there's a folly of some kind. There's very little online about any of this area. Plenty about the house and the Tomlins, but almost nothing about the park. Still, it made for an interesting few minutes. Okay, let's talk about those barrows now at Ryby Grove. And when we've done that, I'll hop into the car because there's still a little bit more to show you of this place yet, but it does require driving rather than walking. Let's get to it. Ryby Grove Farm sits away from the village and from where Ryby Grove was. It's off the A1173 back towards Cabourn. There are two scheduled barrows 700 yards southwest of the farm. Neither are visible above ground, but the burial remains survive inside. One is a Neolithic long barrow and the other is a Bronze Age bowl barrow. Together with these, I also need to mention the Ryby Hoard. In fact, there are two. The first is a collection of some 15 to 20,000 bronze coins dating from the years 253 to 275 AD. They were found in an urn covered by a dish at Ryby Wold Farm in 1953. The coins are held by the Ashmolean Museum. In addition, Lincoln Museum hold a further collection of 21 coins dating from 305 to 383 AD, thought to be only part of the second hoard found at Ryby. This last part takes us from the village up to where the A1173 meets the A18. There's a small area of the village which sits on a staggered crossroads. It's not much more than just another collection of houses, although the junction itself is the main reason why I wanted to cover this part of the parish. You see, the A18's junction with the A1173 is a notorious accident black spot. It used to genuinely be a crossroads but has since been realigned, probably to make it safer. Accidents do still happen here though, I've linked one such example below. About 400 metres to the west of the crossroads, by the way, is the site of a possible Roman villa. And that, my friends, is that. Another West Lindsay episode is in the books. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and this has been the Parish of Ryby. And I'm out. <laughs>